Hello, hi, uh, welcome. My name is Mark Lloyd, I'm an artist here at the Drop Project Gallery in Boscombe, Bournemouth. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Claire Beaumont for bringing me in on this project, and I'd like to thank Rishi and Linda for keeping the gallery going all this week. Uh, I'm very excited to be here in this gallery because for the first time I've been able to exhibit some of my own work in my hometown. I exhibit all over the country and it's very rare that I actually get to put any of my work in my hometown, so I'm really pleased to be here. The main reason, I'm, uh, one of the main reasons I'm here today is to talk about this painting. Uh, there's a few points I would like to talk about. First of all, I'd like to talk about the conception or the ideas, the theory behind the painting. And I'd also like to talk about some of the processes that went into making this painting happen and, and that I've used to construct this painting. Uh, first of all, the painting is called There Ain't No Love in the Heart of the City, which is based on a Jay-Z song. It's the last painting of a series that I made on the theme of consumption. And this was finished in 2011, and it was the last representational painting that I completed. To, to construct the painting, I began with the compositional theory of the Renaissance, and one of the artists I looked at was Piero della Francesca. I used a compositional theory of his to compress and cause tension and pressure in the centre of the painting. And you can see this from this kind of a hidden X which runs through the composition of the painting, bringing the tension and the pressure up into the centre of the painting. If you look, there is a slight gap, it's a very slight gap, which allows that tension to compress. So this painting feels like there's a cacophony, there's a, there's a pressure hidden within the painting, which I, I really wanted to try to achieve. The second thing is, uh, I talked about the painting is about consumption. And it's about consumption on a societal level rather than a, an individual level. And another thing that's hidden in the painting itself is this here, which is a barcode or a bar chart from the last day before the, 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 the crisis um, that happened in the financial markets. So just before the stock markets crashed, I put this bar graph, which also imitates a building. Um, behind the main city, and it was the day just before the stock market crash happened. The other thing I've used to emphasise pressure and tension is a layering effect. And I start off, I started off in the foreground with the heads. These are the sculptural heads from Easter Island. Then I have a city which I've created. Behind that again, I've kind of almost got this symbolic city, which is the barcode from or the bar chart from the day of the stock market crash, or the day before the stock market crash. And then behind that, I've got another set of buildings which represents the Tower of Babel from the Bible. So there's lots, this painting is made up of multiple narratives, multiple theories put together uh, around the theory of, of consumption. Very postmodern. Combining and connecting theories and histories to create an, a modern narrative. If you look, there is a repetition of, in, of three. There is a hidden number, number three, uh, a, a symbolic religious number that's hidden in the painting. So the buildings, it's also done for the composition. We have three buildings of, with the same patterns repeated throughout this kind of lower section of the painting. This again causes that tension and the pressure and also there's the hidden meaning with the number three relating back to the main large building at the back here in the, in the far distance which symbolises the Tower of Babel from the Bible. This also relates onto, if you look carefully here, there's a hidden language. This is an alphabet and this is an alphabet too repeated. And this relates to the story from the Tower of Bible, uh, Tower of Babel when uh, God's dispersed man um, because of his arrogance and broke up all the languages, broke up all the different nations of people and gave them separate languages. So it relates to that theory from the Bible, which again is a story and a narrative about consumption. So I've mentioned about uh, how I constructed the composition. 
and I've talked about some of the meaning and philosophy behind the painting. Multiple narratives and multiple stories all looped or connected into the theme of consumption. The other thing I wanted to talk about about this painting was the actual processes that I've used to make the painting. It's mixed media on canvas. I've used everything from, uh, for example, here I've used oil paint to uh, render the heads, these island heads. I've used stencils and spray paint. I've used marker pens. Here I've used latex and spray paint. I've got enamel. Um, there's a whole host of mediums that I've used to create and processes to make this painting. The other thing that's really important that I need to mention that a lot of people don't realise is the stencils themselves that are in the buildings are made from stencils that were found in the street. So the building is actually made from the street. I've yeah, used the stencils themselves to create the city. I think that's really relevant and important point about this painting. So this was the last painting I made which was figurative or representation. From this point on, I've kind of, the last few years, taken sections of this painting and they've gone on to create a new series of work from just little sections of, of, of this work. So this has remained an important painting for me in terms of my own progression as an artist. Since this period I've you know, this was two years ago now, 2011 I finished this piece. Um, my career as an artist has gone off in, in a very separate, very different path um, into abstraction and into science fiction and into philosophy. But uh, I'm still pleased and I kind of feel quite contented with this painting. It was successful, I believe it was successful. And um, I think maybe in the future I'd like to revisit some of the themes that appear here. Um, yeah, so all that's left is for, for me to thank everybody who's been involved in enabling me to show some of my work in my hometown, um, which I am really grateful for. And um, yeah, I hope people come and, and enjoy the painting, and uh, thank you.